proclaim the promises of God's word. God's word. God's word. As I laid in that hospital bed, having lost my speech, memory, cognition, motors, having lost everything, and my wife is standing by me, and the physician or the medical worker tells her that this particular stroke I suffered was, uh, the effects were irreversible. My wife had two choices. Here are the choices that my wife had. Listen to the words of the world or listen to the words of God's word. That's the only choices I have. Either listen to the doctor or listen to the great physician. And inside of that hospital room during that week, my wife went to the word of God and God led her to this scripture. And this is a post from her story on November 16th. And it says, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. <sighs> if anybody in here is single, can you see the importance of marrying a champion for Christ? Yeah. It is in Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Impact Church. as you can all see. Can you see it? Can you see it? Because when she claimed that verse, you couldn't actually see it yet. So the fourth pillar is proclaiming the promises of God's word. Because Words are powerful. As I had gotten out of the hospital and I was going to write a sermon and realized I couldn't type because my hand was numb. So I sent my wife a text. Here's a screenshot. I can't type. Natalie, you're going to be able to. Don't get frustrated. You're going to be able to do it. I believe in you and the miracle that God already started. The power of a word. The power of a word. The power of a word. When the book comes out, it's going to be filled with screenshots. No, it is. It's going to be crazy. It's not. There's going to be screenshots, and it'll be a book that you can read, but it is going to have screenshots from lots of different people. Because God and his word is the most powerful force in the world. This is why in Ephesians 6, in the armor of God, in spiritual warfare, this is why it says this in verse 17. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the Word of God. In other words, the Word of God is a weapon of our warfare. But some people don't even know the Word of God. They don't read the Word of God. They don't memorize the Word of God. They don't study the Word of God. 
Therefore, they have no idea how to use the weapon of the word of God. It's like having a gun in your house. You've never, ever shot it. And the enemy comes in. You have no idea what to do because you've never actually used it. Or maybe you used it four years ago in 2020 when you thought the world was going to come after you. You know what I'm saying? You thought they're going to show up with needles and try to pump me full of that poison. I need a weapon. I'm going to blast them off the planet. But you haven't practiced using it for four years. That's some of y'all. Like you read the word four years ago. The word is a weapon of our Warfare. This is why Jesus defeated temptation with the word of God. This is why David said, I have, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I won't sin against you, God. This is why David said, your word, it is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Your word, it directs me, it inspects me, it cor uh, corrects me, it protects me. If you read it. power of a word. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, to watch the full sermon and stay up on all of our latest content, be sure to subscribe to our channel.